Uh, I have our <coughs> permit renewal uh, proposal for Caricon for having them do our permit renewal. And it's to, uh, they put in the figures for the closure cost estimate. And it has to be uh, prepared and uh, signed by the uh, professional engineer. And the scope of the uh, services from Terracon is uh, $1,000. And um, I'll make a motion we authorize the chairman to sign this agreement with Terracon. Uh, second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the agreement for, for Terracon. All in favor say aye. 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 Or you've told us all about it, which I talk with Nita and it's about that. Um, 
um, the interesting journal entries that we have, and I will give those to you. We have many Excel spreadsheets already done up, so you just import them into the software. With no knowledge of fraud or anything like that, all those kind of little things. And I'll have you sign two copies. One will be ours and one will be yours. Yeah, they decided to leave that alone. They decided to leave that alone. Did they? Just yes. recently? 
Because they were talking about um, funding it. Yeah. I thought they talked about phasing it out over five years. Yeah, like mm -hmm. registered yeah. yeah. And then it'd be like a deep registration fee. I haven't the final vote. I think, I think they decided not to phase it out because they claimed it was a mistake they read the statutes wrong or something. And they created the statutes like two years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when they did that, when they built it out. I'll check that out. Yeah, I, I didn't know what the final call in the legislative session was. Because originally it was going to be 12.3%, and what we got was 6.7 was less. Seven or whatever mm -hmm. last year, right? I don't remember. The first supposed, cash infusion was last year, and that yeah, was supposed to be for... We are supposed to get that plus whatever was mandated by the statute. Mm -hmm. But then I thought when we went to the meeting, they, they were saying that they were going to, there was a bill pending that they were going to phase mm -hmm. it out over three to four years. At the end of... I thought they gave you a super inflated, like you talked like 18% of what you... No, no, we had, we were cut. And then they were going to phase it back. Yeah, they did cut us. They did. They did. I do remember that. I don't know percentages. This new bill, we were supposed to get that back. We're supposed to get that. I think there was kind of like a little lawsuit or something. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think maybe it's still pending, but I think I don't think they actually. No, I don't think it's passed yet. I haven't heard anything that's passed. I'm getting a registration well, you also have yeah, registration fees that are going away. From, yeah. I mean, that's going to be a big, a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, the registration fee is a done deal. Right. The oil and mm -hmm. gas, that was decided. The oil and gas depletion is is pending. I think so. But there was a proposal. But due to our lawsuit, we were going to get that percentage back to six percent or whatever it was. But I, then there's there's another that's bill. That's not going to happen. I talked to a couple of them, and they yeah. said that that was a mistake. But yeah, there was an error. Some intern read it wrong. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Blame it on the intern. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they always do. <laughs> the whole state is. They're the only ones that have time to read that stuff. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think Brownback agrees with them, so I think that. I would like to remind you on page six that we do issue primary government financial statements, which basically means that we're not including all of the related municipal entities of the county and the financials. And so in the middle of page six, we disclose um, what related municipal entities we are not including. And one of those is the county hospital, and the other one is the extension council. Now the extension council, I think, is kind of absurd. We kind of all do. That's how the county municipal audit and accounting guide. They believe that is part of the county. Although I know you do an appropriation and you send money to them and you have no control over what they do, but we have to follow that with our regulatory basis of accounting. Uh, let's see here. I don't really have probably more on page 15. Oh, and with the landfill clo closure and post closure costs, the contract you guys just approved for Terracon, that is a footnote we are required to have in our financial statements, and that's on page 12, note 15. Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure he didn't, I don't know if he under, knows that I have to disclose that information with the Paracon grant, but I thought I would let you know that. So your closure and post-closure costs are in there as well. Um, we always have to disclose that liability, the potential liability that's out there for the county. You have approximately $500,000 liability hanging out there with the tenth of it. So, Um, page 14 gives you your overall debt summary of the county. Um, at the end of this year, we'll be done with the ambulance. And then we have those no fund warrants, and that's pretty well all of the debt of the county with the hospital. So, we will have this paid off in 2016, so, we have to have this paid off. On page 15, 
we have our budget to actual comparison. We had three funds on page 15 that we were over budget, which causes us to have statute violation. Basically, we have the road and bridge funds, and the emergency 911 fund, the service for the elderly, and let's get four. We have the Stafford County Hospital Fund that were over budget. Now, we will take care of the service for the elderly in the Stafford County Hospital Fund because we've set that up differently in the software now. We're running it through the AP module. Um, basically, with the software, if the money is there, it wants to cut the check and distribute it out. Regardless if we've received more than what we had anticipated with the budget to pay out. So that's why those two uh, happened. E911, uh, basically we closed things out to one fund last year with the changes they had. Um, we probably could have, we could have republished the budget and fixed that probably with the British, but some of those came in so that we didn't have time to republish. We have our general fund. You notice our cash balances, as we just talked about, have increased significantly. You'll notice that our revenue, uh, we you know, were pretty conservative on our budget. We had revenues in excess of budget of $220,000. And then we had that miscellaneous provision expenditure line item we didn't have to use this year, which was the $330,000 at the bottom of the expenditures on page 16. So that gave us enough cushion to get our cash balances back up again. That's a very nice thing to have. <laughs> On page 18, I just want to draw your attention and remind you that for 2012, we did not have to do any tax levies for the ambulance fund, but we did do that in 2013. If you remember when we had a budget discussions in prior and that kept our cash balance pretty well consistent with the prior year. So I would assume we would probably have to levy taxes again in that fund for the budget we'll be working on in the next month. So. Page 19. Back on page 41, I wanted to point out with the hospital. I don't know, neither and Lisa, we had these discussions when the tax distribution went out. Sorry, that's not the right one. It's page 39. Um, and I know we've had this discussion with the hospital in the past, but with the neighborhood revitalization rebate, I don't, I'm not quite sure some of the hospital board, and I know we've talked about that, but they didn't understand that that goes against the budget, the taxes that are levied for the hospital. Yeah, because I didn't. They have a call to you why they did, why they didn't get that money, and it's like the neighborhood revitalization rebate. Once you approve that, it goes against all tax levy funds, and they did not understand that. However, we'd only budgeted to give them four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars last this past year, and they actually got four hundred eighty-eight thousand five dollars. So, I mean, that's what caused our budget violation. Uh, part of that is we because we paid it all out. So. I mean, when they say they didn't get their money, they got more than the four hundred seventy five thousand dollars we promised them. So I just kind of wanted to point that out. How did they get a neighborhood revitalization rebate? Well, they're part of the county. They're part of the county, okay. and any tax levy well, fund that we have. But I mean, they're like in the other county entity under the county. Any other fund? Yeah. Like yeah. Fund. School mm -hmm. districts. Right. Well, if the school districts choose to, the yeah. three school districts yeah. are in it. Yeah. Yeah. They choose to participate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. And yeah. Then but the hospital does because yeah. the county does. So right. The county is levying the money for the, the hospital. Right. Right. And so any county levy fund has to have that neighborhood of all right. sure. right. taken out. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can't pick and choose what funds yeah. you want that. So, yeah, all of them are going to sign up for that. Those are kind of the big highlights of the financials. Uh, so next year when they budget, or in, if they want four hundred seventy-five thousand, and the NRP was like seventy-eight, that should really 
and you really need to include that. They really need to come to the commissioners with those two figures added together if they are hoping to get 475000 Well, what, we, what we've been doing when we prepare the budget, we do the appropriations as that, and then we factor the neighbor of all the to increase <laughs> yeah, the issue should be 475 plus the liberalization. <laughs> I mean, we could do it that way, but I don't know very happy with it. <laughs> there you go. Tell them that's what Shane said to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. On the paper, that's what it shows. <laughs> yeah, and that is very confusing because I know Lisa was, I think, a question. What's that neighborhood liberalization rebate? Yeah. They didn't understand. They yeah. thought we were withholding money. And it's like, no, yeah. we're not withholding money. Yeah, that's true. They, yeah. Because I remember that day you called me about yeah, that. They, yeah. Yeah. I was like, no, that's what they signed up for. <laughs> if they want their four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, they're gonna have to. So. Well, why did they actually get a little extra? It, it's like she was explaining. It's the way the program is, and it's what comes into factor is the penalties on personal property, um, but on on motor vehicle and on personal property, and I have to distribute it. And by the, by the time, I would have to withhold like their June um, check to make sure that my last distribution in October I'm not over distributing. Because your last distributions are mainly just motor vehicle, and I have to, by statute, give them that. And I can only withhold ad valorem tax, so I would have to hold their June distribution Till, and I could make adjustments, but it would just be a bookkeeping nightmare. Will it be that way again next year? No, we've yeah. rectified it. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's paid out of NEDA, yeah, and then the thing, there will be a balance probably left in that fund, and then we'll use it to offset the next year's budget. Okay. We'll carry that cash balance. Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe we ought to factor that in because it would be that way. No, so that they, um, them and Council on Asian, Aging have always gotten a little extra money due yeah, to that I'm little thing. Asian. But we move that way. Yeah, and that one is yeah. taken care of too now. I mean, there can be a year if we budget on the tax revenues that hasn't happened yet, the tax revenues don't come in where they're at. I mean, they're going to get less because the money's not there to distribute out. Yeah, so, right. I mean, there's also that as well. That's right. You can mm -hmm. only distribute what you get. They mm -hmm. people pay their taxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They did. They wanted a little more. Yeah. They wanted a little more earlier. Yeah. Earlier. Yeah. 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 That's true. Before we collected any taxes. skip around here, sorry, on page 11, uh, note number 9, it is our statute violations. And we talked about the third one of our funds that we had that were over budget. We had checks outstanding for more than two years for the district court. She's working on cleaning those up right now. Um, she's, she's made some good progress. And then we always have needles coming for the game license fee. For the record. <laughs> Are you guys going to get that fixed? The clerk's the association is going to work on that statute. Great. <laughs> because all of us get written up for that. Mm -hmm. I figured Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. so that, that is on the legislative platform. Great. So that will be nice. <laughs> Not that anything will get done. <laughs> for the record. And we're talking about huge amounts of money. Oh. Mm -hmm. like tens and tens of dollars. <laughs> tens of tens. <laughs> yeah, maybe tens of tens. I mean, I am that. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Great. Yes. I'm looking yes. forward to that because I'm tired of We just talked about that a couple weeks ago. Very so, good. Don't get on our list. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> um, do you have any questions on the financials anymore? And if you go home and you know, think of something, please feel free to call us anytime. I'll go over the financial letters, which are the loose letters in the front of your financials. If you have any other questions, this is what the fund goes in. I still don't see anything. Um, first,
first one up top, I believe, says um, management letter on it. This is our overall, uh, basically there's three tiers of management letter comments we can have. We can have material weaknesses, which are part of the top of the ladder, then we have significant deficiencies, and then we have all these other items down below. The significant deficiencies and material weaknesses are what's included on the management letter, the first letter. And we have the same one every year, noted as a significant deficiency in the segregation of fees. It's just not feasible for the county to hire one person just to process bills, one person just to do payroll, one person just to sit there and collect receipts all day long. Um, so that's why we have this comment in there to just make you aware of it and then to also notify you that as the commissioners, it's very important that you, know, you are the oversight and mitigating factor we have in the internal controls for reviewing the claims for payments, for vouchers payable, and going through and looking at things like that with your approvals. So you are part of our internal controls that we rely on. The next letter is the governance letter, and that's all the other items that weren't significant deficiencies and material weaknesses. And what we did this year, um, we're required to communicate all of these items to you that you'll see. And we did have any disagreements with management. Um, we did have some adjusting journal entries that we were going to provide to the county for them to post in their records. We did not know of any other management consultations on the second page. And then we go to the other matters. and. Um, when we did this this year, and I think it kind of helped when we reviewed it when we did our exit conference for the audit, we did the prior year comments first, and then we did the current year comments through that. We kind of separated them so you can see what we've had comments in the past um, that weren't necessarily, I mean, if they were resolved, they wouldn't be on here. However, we did have a lot of comments that were resolved last year. So, you know, it, it takes time to get some of these cleared and get some of the policies and procedures done. So, um, you know, the first one was the outstanding checks for more than two years. We talked about that with our statute violation with the district court. Um, <coughs> the other ones that she's waiting on to clear out, she did clear out quite a bit of them, but she needs the judge approval before she can do that. So, she's waiting on that. Um, she still has her accounts receivable. She needs to work on a reconciliation process with that. That's the same comment we had last year. The EMS Fire Department, they've made improvement on their accounts receivable, but uh, they still need you know, some work on that. They had over 90 days old. We still have $192,000 out there. That's over 90 days old. But it sounds like taking it to the collection agency has been helping since we've turned it over to the company at Dodge. So that's a nice improvement. General matters, we talked about the statute violation, the budget violations. We would like to see annual employee evaluations conducted annually across the county, have a structured process to make sure all departments are doing that. That's very important for your human resource files and your documentation, and then if you ever have any employees, you know, that you have the documentation and they're not performing to their specified job tasks. Talk about the payments and fees. Um, the county grants, all of those should be approved through the county commissioners. Um, any grants that the county signs up for, any departments, uh, just to verify one, that we know about the grants, and two, that we're doing the grant reporting correctly. And that should all be ran through the county clerk and county treasurer to make sure their reports actually tie back to the county folks. We could get into problems with that. We've had issues in the past where we had to pay some grant funding back because they did not do all of their reporting requirements correctly. And then we would like, and I think maybe you're going to work on this policy, which is probably a fun one for you guys, um, to take five consecutive days off if you're dealing with the county, anything with the accounting function. Uh, one, it identifies areas for cost training. Somebody got hit by a bus tomorrow, or we guess I to come in and function or handle their job position. And then sometimes, um, unfortunately, I'm not saying it's happening here at all, but we've also had instances where people found fraud. 
or more in probably in the cities than the telephone side of anything, but when they were, there's always potential for that. I think for the most part, we do this, don't you do that I've, with I've, your I've girls done and that for several people. years in my office. Yeah. We do it. Yeah, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. We just like to maybe make a policy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that way it's kind of a required thing. Does that include the commissioners to get back? What, you do the month of Wednesday? Fine with me. You can take vacation then, too. That's <laughs> <laughs> just a comment. I didn't see it written anywhere. I didn't either, that's why I asked. <laughs> uh, one thing about the health department. Um, Sorry, I didn't know. Oops. Siri, nothing more help. They don't need your help right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody that has accounts receivable in the county should be coming to the commissioners to have those approved. As right to our knowledge, the health department is not doing that, and that was kind of brought up this year. Uh, we started looking at things, and uh, when we asked her her write-off procedure, she says, well, I just write them off as need be. We're like, okay, so <laughs> did you have any <laughs> approvals or anything? So um, I know she's not going to be very happy with me, but um, she really needs to get the accounts receivable. She needs to send that list for approval. Just as another, you know, outside looking in, more to cover her job duties than anything. And then... Um, the reconciliation, I know she says she's working on the reconciliation and doing it, but it's not quite as what we had expected her to do. Um, you know, we really want her to tie back to the county general ledger of what she has for receipts and what the county is showing in her fund. And I think she's looking at the receipts and kind of adding them up day by day. But in total, she did not reconcile them back to the county general ledger to make everything I'm sure everything was posted in there. So we have a little bit more work to do on that. Um, sheriff's department basically um, continue working and reconciling back with the QuickBooks file they have back to the county ledger just to make sure all their transactions are properly recorded. New comments this year, um, the EMS fire department, they need to do the same as well since we switched that bookkeeping over and back to them. They need to reconcile their receipts to what we have in the ambulance fund. Why are these departments not doing that? I mean... I don't know if there's... I feel there's do they not know how to do it? Or do they not been directed to do that? Or? I don't know if they really see a large emphasis in doing it or the need or importance of it. Perhaps maybe that... I mean, you know, we tell them it's very important, but I don't know. I think maybe as the commissioners express that it's very important that they reconcile. And I just sent her the monthly report. Very good. Uh, she's getting it. Yeah, at least it's sending the reports, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's getting done. Right. Yeah. So, and I know they have other things going on. Yeah. EMS, I mean, obviously their main concern is keeping people alive. Um, you know, quite honestly. So, I mean, the record keeping, I understand the whole side. Sometimes, but the whole point of issuing financial statements for the county is to make, verify that you have all of your departments. You know, we have good years yeah, in the right. office. It happens all the time. Kind of financial mm -hmm. stuff I need to. When we have a disconnect there, then we're not sure if we have a completeness of all the transactions during the year. Yeah, I mean, we were out there and we told them. But it doesn't hurt. General matters, and this is extremely minor. We have one credit card payment that had no receipts. Uh, of course, it's the credit card. <laughs> they pulled one that didn't have like a $20 receipt. It was very small. You guys are crazy. <laughs> it was a new staff, too. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it was on Moody's credit card, and you know his vouchers are always this thick. And yeah. We missed it. I let her pull her up. I didn't pull it for her. So. Yeah, well, we like the pull her up. <laughs> pull for her. I don't know. Oh, sure. gotcha. But I have talked to the department heads and reminded them. 
that I see them. And then the last one is just the Sheriff's Department. The VIN inspections um, came to our attention that they kind of hold on to those sometimes. They don't necessarily get them remitted back to Lisa's office, the county treasurer. So um, we would like weekly deposits so we're not putting on VIN deposits for you know, perhaps a month or something. It's not a lot, but again, it sits around that have a tendency it could potentially get lost somewhere. copy of my receipt every day. Yeah. I mean, I give them copies every right. time they, I receive yeah, them. Yeah, you should give them a receipt. Yeah. Right. But, um, let's see, what other? Oh, oh yeah, Roman oh, Red. Cindy's the main one. I stop daily work until Cindy gets with me. That I know. That all the others, I go ahead and carry on. Cindy does a great job. I Cindy does good. that actually pays attention to what we do. Yeah, but I would say Cindy's I probably know. the role model for the rest Thank of the department to follow. Yeah. Quite honestly. I, mean, she I don't start the next month's books until I hear from Cindy in case there's something we got to make an adjustment mm -hmm. and you can yeah. do a transfer. For these other departments. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you will have Cindy be department head. Uh, Maybe somebody should do the game tags. <laughs> Maybe I should quit doing that. <laughs> that would solve this whole problem. You don't have to offer that. I know, I don't. You don't have to offer that. Then you can go to Dell with me too. I already have one. I'm surprised we've got rid of the stick. More in there about you, Mr. <laughs> oh no, here we go. <laughs> I told him you need five days off in a row. <laughs> Probably not this year. Probably not this year. Yeah. You take Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry, it's the They don't. It's a day. Not here. Oh. We actually get to go home two days. Really? You didn't know that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Not everybody worked over weekend. Just us, Clay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <whatever. laughs> Goodness. Any questions of full time? Josh, I do Or anything like that that's come up that we should know about. Um, 
the restoration. How is the hospital? They had a good moment in January. Yeah, they had a couple of good moments. I hear about that out here. I mean, you look at their you look at their financials, and from where they were last year, mm -hmm. and this, where the current month is that we're looking at, I mean, there's drastic changes in fences. Mm -hmm. and, and I even asked in the last meeting, what you know, I see we're seventy five thousand off of where we were last year. What are we planning for ahead? To and there's not a magical answer. Are you doing any auditing financials to their in-house financials? Well, this is just uh, basically the comparing off the budget from oh, last year numbers. Okay. So I don't, I don't know, I mean, yeah, just, uh, you know, trying to figure out, we have some really good months, I mean, <laughs> but it's just, uh, it, you know, you look at that same month last year, and that, you know, the numbers were not even close to what their budgeted numbers were, for where they're at, I mean, it's just, to do that. And that's a tough business. I mean, that's a. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like you know, the door is always yeah. open, but no one comes in. Yeah. And it's all it's all dependent upon on the elements, mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate. You know, here we're trying to promote good health, but yet on the <laughs> other hand, we want you to be sick. But uh, staff-wise, I think they're pretty good. And in fact. With this new regulation about physical therapy, there are things about hiring another therapist just to keep up with the business. Well, so there now you don't have to have a doctor's order. You can get ten treatments in physical therapy without a physician's order. Yeah, I should have great <laughs> And their lab numbers have always been good. Though. I mean, their lab physical yeah. therapy lab numbers. So their outpatients. Yeah, outpatient yeah. stuff's just tremendous. But then the other thing that kills you is the emergency room. Because no one can be denied. Yeah. Whether they have insurance or not. Or... Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's not unique. No. It's unique to all Every county hospital hospitals. Mm -hmm. Even big hospitals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and then the other thing is that if you do have more inpatients, three months down the road you're penalized because you've gone above that magic number where you're not reimbursed as much as if, if you had empty beds. It's just, it's just crazy business. It's ludicrous. It's, For them to end up where they were at the end of last year, I mean, because that that was pretty tense. And, and the year before that, yeah. You know, it just well, and they had a snowball effect. So yeah, they they did. started four years yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they came to us, and we're, I mean, there wasn't nothing we could really do. <laughs> I mean, it's. Uh, I wish there was a cushion we could figure out there, but I don't know what the compliance area is. Well, I mean, if they were making 
depends yeah. on the day they have, they open the doors back in 19. And I think they've made some changes, though. Well, I mean, the county hasn't always been good. Yeah, but they're they're tax district. Yeah, they used to have a tax district. And they've got away from that for a while. I've I've seen the figures of the money they got from the hospital district, and it hasn't. It's been up where it's at now for a long time. It's just spread out over the whole county. But they've made some changes too in their billing and collection department that I think will have some drastic changes for the good. I mean, there was some stuff. There was some stuff that weren't coding right and charging right, you know. That, and I, I think that'll really, really help them. same situation with some of the schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not only the hospital, it's the school districts. Are. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. Especially with what the state wants to do. And you want to take it all back to the local taxpayers. And that's what we heard in the, uh, yeah, the commission. commission. It's, it's, it's something that the state's election. not doing this anymore. It's, it's rolling back. It's it's school. It's it's school. School. on the burden of the county. So what does the county say? Business owners and property. Yeah. St. John. And there's, there's a saturation. I think we've already gone beyond that. And it's going to be 
types of yeah. 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 services.
we didn't have the speculators, you know, you know, come in and, you know. Yeah. So we were very poorly to go to the we have a note. Can we step up and talk with the man? Okay, I thought we were done. I got calling to Melissa, but I thought, well, you're here. If you were here, you can Yeah, I can't live without those. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Good, Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Thank How you. Exciting. <laughs> Yeah, exciting or scary. Or <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Bill? You got something, Bill? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'll make a motion to the executive session for 10 minutes from now, like the personnel. Can you take Bill or can I run upstairs? You can run upstairs. Okay. Unless you want to say anything more. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. And you second that. I second that. Okay. We have a motion to second to go into executive session for ten minutes for discussion of non-elected personnel or all favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, I'll start over. I have budget, 2015 budget for emergency preparedness. Doug and I sat down and did this on Friday. He made a cut on his salaries. We're just kind of feeling our way with the 2015 budget since we split those three departments. Um, he raised his other equipment because he needs to buy some more handhelds. Um, media travel went up because he's going to go to more training and meetings and stuff. Um, he added fuel, fuel costs, which were never in there before. It. Some went up, some went down, but like I said, the overall budget came in at $41,750 compared to $49,650 last year. So if you have any questions, he said he could come over. Is there a equipment enough since he spent $8,998 last year? Well, see, we're, and we're working on the fee. We're working off of the 13 figure we got to looking, and a lot of that stuff's commingled with fire equipment and EMS equipment. It, it just kind of, it's not a true picture of emergency preparedness, I guess is the best way to explain it. Because with those three departments having one department head, he tended just to... Yeah, exactly. Now the radios, yeah, I need that, more clear the so, radios <laughs> that we let... Uh, <clears throat> Rob and Tom buy. Are, did they buy enough radios that they've got extras and that that's part of a, this? Or? That's out of fire. This is immersive preparedness. preparedness. Oh, I know that, but I thought they bought enough radios they could share them. I don't know. I, I thought that's when they bought all them radios that day that that's what they said, that they'd have plenty of radios for everybody. I mean, that's why they're cut, can cut back a little bit now. I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, but I, I don't know that he knows that. That. Or maybe you should ask them. I don't know. Oh, I see. And maybe it's a different radio. I don't know. That yeah, either. exactly. I don't know if. But if, I remember when Rob and Tom were buying all EOC. those radios because we let them buy yeah. you know, so many extra radios, so they would always have plenty of the same style of radio. Everybody had the same style of radio. And so maybe that's just for the fire. I don't well, know. that's Is what the I. Is EOC do. more banned? Well, see, I don't know if this is for something for that emergency operations center. Or they could be in... It could be, I don't know. Well, yeah. we'll we just make a footnote. Radio yeah. question. Yeah, I'll ask the fire department about those radios. What, what, what line item is that? It's down in other equipment, 45, 33. He raised it 1,000. But in 2013, their actual expense was 9,000. Uh, that might be... Some of them Actually, he has a note here on his what he hand wrote, handheld radios for command center. Yeah, and I think got. I think that's so, the same radios that Robin. Called. I'll ask Robin. So we may get to reduce that. So that'd be a question, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Not too sweet.
Ryan's budget stayed the same if you take out that transfer that the auditors built in of 86.27. His, his um, overall stayed the same, 90,600. He didn't foresee any major chemical increases or anything, so that's... Every line item is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he said... So he said 4312 is a little big. And 11. Where's that? Yeah. Um, no. 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 It's exactly year, the same. I, was like I remember last year's. It was exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. See, he, tends, <laughs> he, tends, he tends to run pretty oh, close. I like on the a lot of things. changes. No. So, okay. <laughs> That's pretty easy. <laughs> Except the chemicals from 13 to 14 and 15 jump considerably. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think you started to get a lot more of that chemical money in the spring. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Man, it looks good. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, and then here's Joe's budget. He can oh, explain no. this to you. Joe's budget. Well, do you have a copy here? I can pretty much remember it. Oh. So, <laughs> the, big, the big question mark for next year is is my copier going to? Continue. It's an older model, <laughs> and uh, if it goes, you know, that'll, that'll be a fairly major expense. Either we'll have to go into a, a lease, or uh, I, I prefer a lease rather than having to actually go out and buy a copier. I've had a very good lease up in Ellsworth County, where if we have a malfunction with the copier, they just wheel the new one in and wheel the old one out. I mean, and uh, but I also see a couple problems on, on the horizon, uh, there's there's going to be a move to make all filings in court electronic e-filing, which to me makes perfect sense in a larger venue like Central County or Johnson County. Out here it's kind of ridiculous, but apparently in Topeka they believe that one size fits all. So I'll have to buy software, you know, which the state will you know, point me to. And then you have the problem of whether or not that software is going to work on our computers. Now, when we did the upgrade uh, to uh, whatever the heck is Windows 8.0 or whatever, mm -hmm. we were able to do that using the same computer equipment downstairs. We didn't have to go out and buy new stuff. Mm -hmm. But anytime you, you get these new software packages, there's no guarantee it's going to fit on your computer or run on your computer. So that's why I'm asking for this rather substantial increase because, um, again, you know, I, I want money available in case my copier goes out, in case I gotta, you know, get some new computer stuff. Now that might not happen, but you know, what can I say? I, I have a good record down here with the last eight years of coming in under budget, right, Nita? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I think I've pretty much kept my butt frozen from the last four years, so this is, you know, inevitable. The $2,000 for office equipment then is for the update on the computer? It, 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 it's, the, it's there for the uh, uh, copier and also, you know, software for the computer, you know, for the new computer if the software doesn't run. Because I can say that when they do have that e-file, it's going to be mandatory. And again, mine is a voice in the wilderness because I keep saying what works in western Kansas, you ought to keep it that way. I mean... How much can you lease the copier for? Oh, I think the copier lease uh, about $1,800 up in Ellsworth. Not bad. Plus, well, there's also a surcharge if you run above so many copies. Your, your secretary has to make a report every quarter. A lot of times we get hit with a surcharge. But um, you're meeting the travel expenses last year. You didn't budget anything. Yeah, it, it wasn't, wasn't budgeted. I, I don't know why. Um, but uh, 
for example, I have my ongoing project, uh, which is looking at jails so I can sound intelligent whenever you know, I decide to go with the jail. Um, I've been too busy lately to look at jails, but I'm down to two more. So. Um, the one nice thing is that our prime rate seems to have stabilized. You're at about 60, 65 criminal cases a year, which is good because that's less money we're expending in court appointed counsel. Let's face it, nine out of ten cases you're seeing in court appointed counsel. So we have our customary 12 <laughs> incarcerated? 12, between 12 and 14. We were more like 18 for a while there, but we sent a few back to prison. And um, so we're like, we're about 12, 14. For example, little things I try and do to, um, you know, keep the jail costs down. Uh, this Travis Tobin character we're supposed to sentence on June 6th, but the pre-sentence report is done, so I'll go to Great Ben tomorrow and we'll get him sentenced, you know, because yeah, he'll be released after sentencing because he's in the probation box. That way I save 16 jail days at $45. Per day, um, our biggest risk, you know, it, it, our, our exposure is not so much, you know, paying per diem. It, it's well, all the driving of officers do moving prisoners. We've been real lucky; we have not had a you know, car wreck or a car gear wreck or something, or the prisoner grabs some bottom feeder returning in Topeka or Wichita and sues us. Have we got that thing up and running yet? Um, it, Randy went, I think, to Greensburg last week and it's running. He's going to train the judge on Tuesday. Very good. Yep. So that will be going. But the biggest problem we have is Greensburg used to be our little secret. Other counties have found out about jail space is at an all time premium. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Ellsworth County, we've been max now, and we're paying Lincoln County to house people. And I keep waiting for the lawsuit up there because the Lincoln County Jail is right out of the Middle Ages. It's one of those works projects, administration jails, where the sheriff was supposed to, the family was supposed to live on the ground floor. And the second floor was basically a big you know, bullpen cell. Well, the, I've been up on the second floor of the Lincoln County Jail in the summer. It gets up to about 120 degrees. Or... Yeah. <laughs> I kid you not. I, I, went up, I went up there to talk to somebody, somebody it's not full of potential witness, and I noticed all these guys are sitting there basically nude. Uh -oh. And I, so, so, I suddenly realized, and now I know why, because I put the big V stones <laughs> on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and no pain. But uh, wow. people with the fans, you're, it, just, yeah. it just builds up. And I'm like, you're keeping people in, in this hot box? I mean, this is like I was bridge on the river quad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, that's one good way you don't want to come back. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we said our problem children from the yeah. Ellsworth oh. County Jail. Because what the sheriff is doing in the Ellsworth County Jail is he's, he's got three people who are, I guess, more trustworthy than the average prisoner. He's, he's got three people sleeping on mats in the hallway. <laughs> well, here's where you get jammed up. You know, you get somebody like a third-time DUI. Guess what? You're stuck with them for like 180 days in jail, no hits, hands, or butts. You can try. We've been lucky down here. Maybe we get a better class of drunk, but they seem to have the money to do the house arrest. Mm -hmm. But the thing about the house arrest is uh, it's expensive. They check out the per diem. Plus, you also have to have a fixed line phone installed in your house because that's the platform for the monitoring system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and somebody told me to get a fixed line phone installed is around 500 bucks now. So we've been lucky. We've done that here in uh, Stafford County, but again, it's, it's something that you know, we could have run with four drugs. Uh, the mandatory minimums for DUI are tough. Although the Kansas Court of Appeals just made it much more difficult to prosecute a DUI case because they essentially gutted the implied consent advisory law, which seems to me I'm the only attorney who reads those you know advance sheets, and I kind of knew about this before everybody else, and I you know uh, basically have uh, I'm going to lose a few cases because of that. Because you know, it came out February 7, apparently law enforcement you know. Highway Patrol on down. Nobody seems to be aware of it. So I'm like, gee, guys, I mean, you got to have somebody sitting there at the computer on Friday when they release this stuff, you know, so you know what the heck they did. The legislature did something else that'll make more, make court proceedings more ex ex expensive. Uh, for years, the state of Kansas has been what's called a FRY, F R Y E, jurisdiction which is an evidentiary standard for expert testimony. Before an expert can get on the stand, the court has to find that his opinion is one shared by the general scientific community. The purpose of the Fry test is to weed out whack jobs, you know. Yeah. And now we've gone with this Daubert, D-A-U-D-E-R-T standard, uh, the legislature just enacted for reasons nobody quite knows why. And Daubert leaves it to essentially judges' discretion whether an expert will testify. So you're going to you have judges who let anybody testify. The joke is, hey, he traveled 100 miles to be here. He must be an expert. That's it. But, uh, and the other thing the legislature did, which is going to be expensive, is they passed a law saying that on like building plans, PEs, professional engineers, can't sign off on plans. Now it has to be an architect. Kind of like what I call the architect's full employment law. Yeah. And that's just going to add on cost. To give you an idea how uh, this can affect the county, we signed on with uh, Bill Harbin, who's a PE I've known for years, to do some very necessary repairs to the Ellsworth County Jail, which is kind of sinking or settling, because when they built it, they took out a couple of little houses like you have back there, which had basements, but they did not apparently use a sheep's foot to really pack it in. So that, you know, you got you know, metal cell doors that don't close because the little building settling. So we signed a big contract for like $180,000 with Bill Harbin, and the very next day they pat they enacted that law that we had to have an architect. I double checked on that, but and we kind of dodged the bullet there in Ellsworth County. But that law went sailing through without anybody knowing about it because uh, Tish Morakal, I forget which of the big Salina firms she's with, she's like a retained counsel for like engineers. Kansas or something like that, you know. And she's embarrassed because that law was sailing through the legislature without her being aware of it. Mm -hmm. Apparently they have a nice trick down the legislature of, of, of introducing bills on the floor and passing. They don't even see a committee. There's no testimony. Nobody knows about it. So, you know, uh, if, if we have to, you know, do anything down here building, you know, repair-wise, we're going to have to get an architect. I mean, we're safe on our, you know, fix the boiler thing. But it's, it's like, I guess, the you know, legislature was her, her sob stories from starving architects or something. Mm -hmm. So, very, very, very briefly, I'm not going to be hurt if, if I don't get the increase, but I just want you to, to know, you know, it, it's, it's, I just want to have money available because aging copier and God knows what this mandatory new file is going to look like. I mean, as if I can't walk upstairs and push paper across the counter. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, I, I'm doing a little better, Nita. Although we think I did 
possibly tear part of that Achilles away. That know. looks good compared to about a week ago you came oh, yeah. hobbling in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I swear his ankle was that big around. It was. <laughs> and, and of course, I, I really appreciate the sympathy I got from every day. I mean, <laughs> sure. I'm certain. Yeah, I'm certain. Story. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, pre it's pre pretty bad when, when, when my, my secretary just, you know, laughs and laughs and laughs. And she sees me coming down the hall because the place I go in now, you know, Ellsworth County Courthouse doesn't have any steps. I can go down steps. I can go up steps. Going down steps is tough. And she just laughs. I mean, you, you know. It's funny. Oh, yeah, you laugh too. I mean, I our, our undersheriff can, can, can test. You can. Yeah. 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 Our sympathy is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here, here's the question. Oh, I, I just questions. had, I lost the number of in the courthouse. After I, I paid my taxes, walked outside, and between my truck and the door, I lost an envelope that I would like to get back, wanting to know if I can put Post a note. On the doors? Where people on the doors? Oh, sure. 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 Well, she's got one on the bulletin board, but I didn't know about the doors, sure. so I thought we would just ask and find out for sure and get it okay. And okay, sure. and absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey Rob, those um, radios that the fire department purchased, mm -hmm. what, a few months ago? Those extra radios? Were those, any of those for emergency preparedness too, or were those just for your fire? I think they were just for fire. Okay. Cause Doug had budgeted for radios for next year, and we didn't know if if what you bought he well if I don't know what he radios for himself and whatever they need. The I mean, DOC does require be different, different radios than yours. Not really. I mean, okay. Well, unless he's adding. It just said the radios for, radio for, for command around. center, it said. Okay. So that would be different than yeah, what you Yeah, that'd be different. Okay. We use it on the fire occasionally, but I mean, it's just... Okay. It's an old ambulance based up with we're trying to get all the radios in. Okay. So, so you can talk to anybody and everybody, a lot of county people that are coming in. Okay. It's a place to work out. It's a mobile okay. office. Have you had any bad fire down okay. there? So. No. Um, no, another no. thing, Misty called in, and she was going to come in today with her... Um, Cancer sequel, you'd ask on, but she is sick, so I told her to stay away. That's very good. Do you have anything? No. He's been making longer than last time. Oh, <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> He's getting antsy. We prosecuted somebody up in Ellsworth County under our local ordinance. For you cannot legislate intelligence. I mean, the wind's up to 35 miles an hour, gusting to 40, and somebody's got to set a fire. You know, burn a brush pile. I mean, give me a break. We burn fast. And as well as half the county. So, yeah. The guy who actually lives in Lincoln County, which is good because he don't like me, paid thirty eight hundred dollars you know, in fines and costs. But I think he's looking at some pretty expensive lawsuits from his neighbors who you know, he burned up. Because when your you know pastor is burned up due to somebody else's being stupid, I think you're gonna sue. Because mm -hmm. guess what? It's called no cow caffeine, it's for the foreseeable future. Yeah. You guys have anything else? I don't. I know. Okay, we'll adjourn.